Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? I suppose we're always on our path, aren't we? So whether we actually realise that we're on a path or not, as to whether it makes us want to manipulate or, or work with that path and, and go in that certain direction or, or, or augment the path. But in terms of channelling, it really was a bit of a mistake, I think, because, or, or a chance moment actually in time, or, or should I say, was it really a chance moment or was it guided? <laughs> Who knows? But basically what happened is I went through an awakening process as, as a result of um, uh, being unlocked through being in meditation whilst seeing a friend in Sweden back in 2000 and then embarking upon a, uh, a program of being taught energy healing through a first generation student of Barbara Brennan and part of that work allowed me to through being taught how to uh, open chakras elevate the frequency levels the base frequency level of my body and also to communicate with the higher self of the patient to be able to, in essence, work out what they needed to be healed on and how to heal them, even though they were coming with an ailment. And so the channeling work was really to understand how to heal somebody. And it was only through that and working with the, this awakening process that I went through in Sweden and writing down some of the information that came through from my what I used to call my meditational meanderings um, that I started to realize that this was not only was it useful information and could eventually become a book but also that it it was it, uh, it was classified as channeling for instance uh, not specifically mediumship but it became a different level of information different depth of information it could the depth could rise and fall depending upon what I was working with and so basically I started to realize that it was channeled probably three or four years after I started to do it and so it became something that was a natural thing to do without really understanding the fact that I was doing it and that made it more natural I guess that perspective. There's there's two sort of types of channeling um, that, that are for me definitive. One is that the the channel, the person is acting as a, if you like, a portal for information. And, they, and there's an active dialogue between the incarnate self here and the entity or being or incarnate being of a higher frequency to gain information. So there's a dialogue there. So that's, that's, that's where one level of channeling comes in. And then there's the, um, the aspect where the, the the consciousness or the sentience of the self is temporarily removed from the body, allowing this other entity to come in or being to come into the body and communicate direct with an audience, for instance, or with an individual who's seeking information about something. So one is where the person is in trance and the one is where there's an active dialogue between the entities um, that they are in communication with. And those entities, as I've just explained, can be 
disincarnate entities, entities at a higher frequency. They could be astral entities as well, who are existing in the planes of, of frequency just above the gross physical. So it's really, it's really about creating this dialogue between you and something which is not visible or not perceivable in the gross physical frequencies. Um, a, an entity is an individualized um, aspect of source, for instance, what you want to call God if you want to call it that, but I, I call it the source entity, that's what I was told to call it. But it's an individualized function of that. And it's the sentience and the energy that's associated with that sentience that's individualized to allow it to become something. So that's created. And that's, that's what, what I've been told to call an entity. An entity is an individualized function of source sentience, or it could be our true energetic selves, our higher selves, which has been individualized to create the aspect, what we call the soul, to experience more things. But in essence, it is sentience with a given, a given a body of energy or with a body of energy that's commandeered. And that energy is just something that sentience works with. It's not this is a body, the gross physical is a body, although it is ultimately energy or low, low frequency. It's, that, it's, 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 a, it's a created entity. And all of us on Earth are created entities. We are entities. A being is when energy naturally becomes intelligent through energies of like type slowly clumping together and those bits of minor minor attractivity can later be, uh, create intelligence because it'll attract other levels of uh, similar energies that have got a similar level of um, attractivity and that attractivity can become minor intelligence and so that then grows into a, a, a greater level of intelligence, attracts other energies of, of levels of intelligence. And it can go from intelligence to self-awareness, to creative intelligence, to sentience, so over a period of about 29 to 30 different steps. Um, and so they're, they're, they're beings because it's, 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 it is a, an evolved uh, level of sentience. But some of these are, are still in the intelligence state. And Although they evolve, they can't evolve further um, without the creation of additional energies to put them in that level. And so they have to attach themselves to a, a higher level entity, which is what we are, to allow them to, to gain energy so that they can evolve faster and faster as a result of that. And they can gain their own level of sentience as well. And so what they do sometimes, they attach themselves to us, take our energy because they can't met metabolize their own energies, and they give us something in return. Sometimes it can be information, so people can be in, co in communication with such and such an entity, or such and such a being as the case may be. And sometimes it's just knowingness, or, in, or intuitive, or coercive, or um, controlling energies or ways in which they can move forwards or gain uh, control of other people to give them status, for instance, which is what the, the human mind tends to like, or the human ego tends to like in status, in terms of material wealth, uh, power and status, and, and obviously roles within, within, the, within civilization. And so we have to be careful when we're dealing with these things, because it could be one of these astral beings or astral entities, depending on how you want to call this, or it can be entities that are still incarnate, but a higher frequency, who are sometimes trying to help us, and sometimes they are just seeing what happens if they throw the odd spanner in the work, so to speak. Uh, and so it can be for fun sometimes, but we ultimately can take it as being something important. So we have to be careful on how we deal with these, these things, how we check and do double checks to make sure, treble checks sometimes, or even quadruple checks other times, to make sure that the information we're getting through isn't contrived by ourselves, given to us because we want to know something in this way and so we're given it in that way, or whether it's actually real. Um, and when you get corroboration between different channelers, that the information is gained individually and in isolation to each other, but it's the same, the same, but it's the same inf information, and there's been no corroboration with anybody else at all in, in, in the sort of in the middle bit. 
then you know that the information is true. So we have to be really careful with how we broadcast information. And also we have to be really careful because we can get complacent. When we are channelers, we start to let our guard down in terms of the quality of information that we get uh, and, and the level of detail we get to support that quality and the robustness of it. And so we have to make sure that we, we're always checking things out. We can't sort of say, oh, I've checked things out at the start and now I know it's okay because there's always these little things that can sneak in the back door, which are, you know, these, these beings, the astral beings trying to, you know, take advantage of us, for instance, or even, or even incarnate entities who are trying to take advantage of us by making us do things on their behalf, so to speak, that we wouldn't normally do because we, we are, we'd be more aware of being used in the human sense, but when we're being used by what we call a, a spirit, for instance, it's a bit more difficult to, to swallow. So we sort of tend to take what spirit says as being, as being right. But in real terms, there's just, as, there's, there's just as many opportunities to get things wrong when talking to spirit or other entities, whether they're disincarnate or incarnate, uh, or whatever frequency they are when they're incarnate, um, versus when we are in the human state. Yeah? We can get things wrong in spirit, we get things wrong here. We can make a mis mistake in spirit, make, we can make a mistake here. So we have to be continuously checking ourselves to make sure that what we do do is, is correct. And if we're broadcasting it, you know, the, 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 the responsibility for the channel is to make sure and check that what's being broadcast is as pure as it can be. And it's not just you know, stuff that's grabbed out of the air and, and, and given out, because that's not justifiable, it's not robust, and it's certainly not repeatable. Okay, so, so how, how do you use discernment then to tell the difference? How, 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 if you're a channeler, how would you...? Well, each channel will, will have their own way of doing it. Um, one of the ways I look at is, what is the information? Because you've got a lifetime of experiences that can be tapped into by the ego, by that, that personality that's created through our our incarnate state to and, and, and anything no matter how how long ago we experienced it can be brought back into the forefront and used as information so if we saw a science fiction film for instance or read a book for instance that was 20 years ago and that we want to find information out about something then that memory can be brought forwards and be construed as being channeling so we have to be careful that we're, what we're doing is not regurgitating something that we've <laughs> experienced in the past, we've read about in the past, we've talked about in the past, we've seen in the past. And so we have to look at that and make sure that that's, that, that, you know, really check things out, make sure that's, that that's not the case. One of the things I do is look at how the information is. Have I experienced it in the past by using those examples? Is it possible that I've experienced it in the past? I'm just regurgitating it. If that's something that's come through from me, then I'll just, dis, dis, you know, I'll just disregard it and discard it. If it's something which is pure, then I'll, I'll have absolutely no knowledge about it at all. If a concept is difficult for me to understand, it's usually authentic, because I've then got to be educated by the, the, the spirits or the entities I'm working with to understand it. And sometimes that takes a long time. If it's, um, if it's also constructed, if the sentences or the imagery is constructed in a way which is not me, for instance, then I know I'm not thinking. Because the difference between us thinking and us channeling information, um, we think in a way we speak, generally, and if, if there's information coming through in a way which is not the way I would construct a language, not using the words that I would use, and not even using the language that I would use, and, and the grammar, and all of these different things, then I know it's it's not me. It is it is it is real, and also there's the physical aspects, the physical feedback. Um, when you're channeling, you're 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 usually channeling because you're creating a bridge between this particular level of frequency and the next level of frequency, which is allowing us to communicate with entities or beings of a higher frequency. And being disincarnate means that they're definitely of a higher frequency. And so the physical body, the gross physical body gives you feedback because you're pulling it up the frequencies. So things like tingling in the hands will give you an idea that you're, you actually are communicating at a higher level. 
Um, pressure around the forehead with the third eyes tells you that there's something going on there and also around the periphery of the skull. And also if you sometimes get tinnitus or tingling, and, you know, ringing in the ears, that's another sign that your, your, your frequency is elevated because that's telling you that you're experiencing um, collectively all the base resonant frequencies of the chakras in, 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 all at the same time. And so what you're getting is you're getting physical responses that are giving you physical evidence of communicating at a higher frequency in a spiritual zone, which is, which is not physically uh, visible or audible or, or, or knowable or touch or tasteable, for instance. So that's, that's, that's how I know. Well, when I read, when I started to work on the and dialogues, uh, <laughs> that question went through my mind. What's the point of this information about reincarnation? Because there's lots of books out there. There's lots of really good authors who've reported on it, really good channels have reported on it. What's the point in me doing this? And the answer is, it's, 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 it's different angle of information and different depth of information. Uh, as human beings, we can't possibly know everything about 1% of what's out there. It's impossible because we don't have the capacity, we don't have the capability, we're not connected anywhere near as well whilst being incarnate as we are when we disincarnate. So if there's information which is out there, but it's slightly different, but the depth and detail again is is so beyond my level of understanding right now that it couldn't be regurgitating something that I've seen or read or anything else, then I then know that it's worthwhile broadcasting it. Because otherwise, if it's, if it's, already, been, if, if it's, if it's already been said, that, that's, then that's been said. Um, but sometimes there, these things do need to be you know, said again, and sometimes in a slightly different way because People respond to different teachers in different ways. One person's guru is not is somebody else's uh, a boring lecturer, you know. And one person may, may may understand the the information from that person, but not not another person. So sometimes we need lots of different teachers saying the same thing in a slightly different way, because then it it links in with somebody else's learning style, and so along with everything else, when we, we, we go through our physical, physical sort of education at school and university, we, we tend to sort of gravitate towards one particular teacher because the way they teach resonates with us and we, and we pick up more, more information, we get, the edu we get educated faster and, and it's easier. And that's the same with, 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 with you know, spiritual teachings. I have a particular bugbear about being called a psychic medium because it mean that they're, they're, they're two words that mean the same thing. To be a medium, you have to be psychic, and to to, to be a channeler, you have to be psychic. And actually, anybody can be a a channel or a a, a medium or a healer uh, or psychic. It's just that it's just that some people do it naturally, and others have to be, be to be taught how to do it. Have to be trained to focus the mind to take. Um, to get the cosmic consciousness to be able to communicate with source or other entities or beings that are part of our greater reality, uh, or to channel energies um, with the person being healed to help heal them, because the healer isn't ultimately the healer, they're just, they're just a portal for the energies to allow the patient to be healed. And so, so really the, there is no difference between a psychic and a medium and a channeler or a healer, it's just that they are somebody who is capable of working with a particular genre of energies to affect healing or communication with either directly or through trance. Um, this particular function within the universe or multiverse you want to call it that and the, and the higher frequencies to allow communication to appear either as a one-on-one -on -one dialogue or as in some form of channel work with its automatic writing typed straight into the computer or literally just um, spoken to through questions and answers. How do you channel? How do I channel? Well, initially, <laughs> I, 
created a really long and drawn out process of getting myself to a frequential level. If you want to call that, it could be classified as being a way in which I got myself to a deeper meditative state. That's one way of saying it. But in effect, what it is, is it's, I used a method of moving myself up the frequencies to allow myself to get into that zone where I was communicating with other entities. These days, because I've moved beyond that, that period of time, it took me maybe 20 minutes to get to where I was going to. I'd spend 10 minutes there and then spend another 20 minutes get going back down again. So that was basically 40 minutes of preparation and depreparation from being in this meditative state, so to speak, by using a, a process that I developed over a long period of time. Um, and in the middle of that, I'd have a, a short period of time to, to get the information. But over a period of time, I started to realize that this was a quite a mechanical way of doing it. And as I became more and more capable of, of going through this mechanical process, it got faster and faster and faster. And to the point now where I just go anywhere instantaneously now, because I'm, I'm there, I've realized that we're all connected anyway. We're all connected to who and what we are, to source or God, to the environment that is source or God, to our, our higher selves or genetic selves or Godhead, whichever words you want to use to, to, to describe that part of us and the environment that we normally exist in all the time. It's just that we need to realize it. And, and that realization is not just a case of mentally understanding it or, or intellectually understanding it. It's a, having a process that allows you to get there that is understandable, repeatable and robust, but leads you to move away from this structured method of getting there, but allowing you to get to that point where you're in constant contact. So now, most of what I do is actually ignoring what's around me in the greater reality and focusing on the, on the physical. Whereas if I, if I need to find something out, I just go to where it needs to go to. Now, I don't say, for instance, if I'm channeling for somebody, I need to speak to somebody's guide, although sometimes I do. But what I do, if it's, if it's general information, I just say, this person needs to know about that and it comes. So I don't need to go anywhere now because I'm already there. And this is what a lot of people find who've worked really hard over the years to go through a structured process of focusing the, the consciousness or the sentience to go somewhere because eventually you get there anyway. The process of getting there with the structured, the structured methodology becomes so fast that you're, you're there anyway. And so you don't need to go through a structured process at the end. It's more sort of intuitive or, or instantaneous now. So um, beginning to get into the mechanics of channeling, I like to close my eyes basically and shut out the, the, um, the surroundings around me. 70% of what we do is with our eyes when we're doing things as, as human beings. So if you're closing the eyes, helps me concentrate. And I'm, I'm there, I get information based upon audible information or visual information, so perceived information, or just knowingness. So he's, you can classify it as clairsentience, clairvoyance, and clairaudience, if you want to call it, the, want to call it those, those things. Um, and I communicate that way, I'll, I'll create a dialogue and, and with, with the entities I'm communicating with, or, the, or the, the consciousness, if you want to call it that, or the information that I'm channeling, and then repeat that back in as un... Uh, in as pure a state as I can do, as unmanipulated, so to speak, as I can do. So I don't try to put any of my bit on there. I try to give it back as much as, as, as pure as possible. And the second way is through chat, is through tra trance. Sometimes uh, a client's guide or helpers um, or source comes through or, or, or aspects of themselves comes through, different aspects of themselves come through, or their higher self or tr true energetic self comes through. And they move my, my sentience or my consciousness out of my body. So I'm ended up being over here or over there somewhere. And they, they actively animate my body and they can communicate either directly in the singular or in the plural if it's the guide and helpers uh, speaking at the same time. So, and then, then, then they get a, a direct communication rather than me being the third party. So there's, there's, there's the two major ways that I, that I use there. Oh, are we all channeling all the time, all of us? Is, that, is this a natural process of who we are? I believe we do, yes. 
I believe that most people go through a series of intuitive decision-making processes um, a number of times a day, but, but mostly rejected. Um, sometimes it's used, uh, and even, even now in science, you know, there's something called uh, gut feeling that they use to describe a process of, of getting to a, a result without it being scientifically justifiable or robust or, or have a metric associated with it. So, <laughs> and for a scientist to say that and then completely throw away spiritualism is quite a, a bizarre dichotomy. But in essence, people do make intuitive decisions on a regular basis. It's only when we try to logic things out by using our intellect that we start to re re reject those ideas or thoughts or decisions or pieces of information and go with logic, human logic. And then later, later more often than that, we find out that our, intu our intuition was, was, was right and, and, and therefore logic was wrong. That we start to realize that we are probably tapping into something higher. But most people wouldn't, wouldn't probably get out of that thought process. Um, most people would just do it and think, oh, I've had an idea about this, I'm, I'm gonna do this. And think it's them doing it. You know, the ego, that part of us which is animating the human body the personality that's created through incarnation and not them bypassing the ego and communicating directly with that piece of information that's there that gives us the information. Um, we have something called autism, which is interesting, um, where certain individuals can access information of a very complicated nature without showing how they've got there because they're tapping into higher levels of functionality that they've got, that we've all got naturally. Uh, I mean, for instance, there's, I mean, on Rain Man, there's, a, there's an example of that with Justin Hoffman. You know, he, there's a, a, a one scene, there's a, a whole group of matches were dropped on the ground and he said, oh, there's, there was a certain number, I can't remember the number there, but say, say 3,241, you know, and there was 3,241 matches on the ground. And he knew, knew instantly, because he tapped into that part of, of, of the greater reality of sentience, his own sentience or the sentience of source, and knew it. And so, and other people, they can tell you what, you know, what day it is in the year 2142, on, on Thursday the 11th of uh, March. You know, they can, they can do that because they, they just drop into it. And also there's others who, who can work out the answer to extremely difficult quadratic equations and all those sorts of different things without showing the yeah, the logical process of going from the from the the, the the figures associated with the question and the figures associated with the answer. They've gone straight to the answer without all these huge equations that get them there. And that's because they're using their intuition, they're using their connectivity um, on a, a natural in a natural way. So natural that it's that people do it on a small scale but, but sort of reject it or just ignore it. But those that are classified as autistic can do somewhat more difficult stuff really easily. But because they're autistic, they're focused on it and they see it as being a skill or a gift of some sort. But in essence, everybody's channeling, everybody's using their intuition and tapping into source or their higher self at all times. We tend to tap into it when we're relaxed. When we are not associated with the physical, when we're chilled out basically, and we let things happen, we let things come. If we were told to work something out, that would provide a blockage. If we tried too hard to do it by using our channeling ability, it would create a blockage. We, we have to be relaxed, we have to be not, you know, not trying too hard, not overly focused, but in the zone. Okay? And it's then, it's, it's then that we do do it more accurately and, and more faster. When we're letting it come through, we're going with the flow, so to speak. That's the time when it, when it works. That's the time when we, when we, when we can make it, we can do it to, um, more often. The trick is to be able to do that <laughs> upon demand. Okay? That's the difference between people who are doing it naturally but haphazardly versus somebody who is able to do it on demand is the, uh, and, and accurately. The, the, or, or, or could even be classified as being advanced, is that they're able to get into that point of acceptance instantaneously 
and not have to go through the 20 minute meditation process to get themselves there, for instance. Yeah, I mean, there's various different levels of spiritualism or metaphysics, if you want to call it that, um, ranging right down to the kindergarten level, to the super advanced levels, and the information and depth of information associated with those are also there. Everybody's got a way of learning. Everybody's got a capacity to learn to a certain point. Everybody's got a level of, for want of a better word, expansion that they can go to. And everybody's got a channeler, a guru, a teacher, or an individual that they like to refer to who they can work with because they're on their frequency, basically. They're, work, they're working on the same level as them. They're in harmony with them. If you go to a teacher that you're out of harmony with or you go to a channel that you're out of harmony with, you won't, you won't get the right answers or you won't get the information that is in keeping with your capacity to understand it. And so we tend to go with people who are on our level, basically. And that's not to say that the lowest level you know, going, you know, looking at angels and unicorns and dolphins and, you know, and, and all these different things, like elementals, is a low level. It's a, it's a level that people start at. I mean, elementals actually can be quite complicated in real terms, in terms of what they're doing for the maintenance of the, the gross physical side of the, of, the, of, the, of the universe. But, yeah, with the elementals, that, that, that can be quite complicated in its own right. Um, because they've got a lot of work to do in terms of the maintenance of the lowest frequencies associated with the multiversal environment that we're, that we're in, this lowest frequency or state being the physical universe. So actually elementals are quite advanced, although people think that they're you know, pixies and unicorns and you know, fairies and all these different things, but that's just the way they're presenting themselves to us. Or, or moreover, it's what we're overlaying and what we expect to see them as so when we do detect them or perceive them, we, we, give, we, give, we overlay this expectation of what they're going to look like and experience. So, you know, things like that are one level. Things that are sort of super heavy metal, so to speak, metaphysics are, 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 are at the advanced stage. And basically we tap into what we are interested in. What gets us from A to B? What allows us to start from where we are and get us to the next level? And some people, achieve a level and are happy there. Some people move into a level and progress a bit and then think they've got to the level that they've made it and they've got there. And others are always constantly realizing that the, the whole process is constant evolution and there's always somewhere else to go to. And so we start to work on you know, the different aspects of metaphysics or, or spirituality, depending upon our own evolutionary level you know, and what we've agreed to experience, learn and evolve with in this particular incarnation as well. Anything. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty you know, generic term. I mean, in, in, my, in the books, I, I, I channel a number of different entities, uh, certainly in the history of God, um, that were within the higher frequencies associated with the, the multiversal environment. Um, one or two entities from the arm, um, different aspects of source because obviously we, we don't get access to all of source because we'd be too big for us to comprehend and work with but certainly source or god and also other aspects of that uh, being which created the entity we call the source recognizing that source entity is an entity that was created by origin and origins are being because it's evolved it's through energetic ev evolution as it were so the <laughs> so the origin of the ultimate creator was evolved as therefore a being whereas our god our source entity was created by it by our origin and therefore is an entity so I, I communicate with origin i communicate with source entity and the other 11 source entities that our our origin created i also communicate with the om as i've just said other entities that are higher frequency incarnates as well you might call them aliens if you wish um, also communicate with people's guides and helpers and you know, even those entities that were incarnate that have moved back into the energetic as well. So it's it, it really that I don't have any limitations on what where I go to really, it, and I'm I'm fairly for, I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm very fortunate in that because a lot of one of the things I would say demarks a channeler from a medium is that mediums tend to be specialised. Uh, a channeler shouldn't be specialised. They're completely generic they can go into any any level 
communicate with any entity irrespective of its um, its frequency or state and its sort of size, if you want to call it that, in terms of whether it's um, the, the higher self or true energetic self of one person versus source or a creator. Um, so it doesn't really, doesn't really bother me from that perspective. But a medium might specialise in, for instance, communicating with source or giving general life um, information, how to live this particular life, or communicating with dead relatives, for instance, those sorts of things. Or communicating with, or even communicating with, with dead pet pet friends, you know, this, the souls or the aspects associated with our, with, with our pets as well, and and also, or communicating with, with with the elementals or the environment around us. So mediums tend to be, if I was going to give you a, a, a you know a demarcation between channelers and, and mediums, channelers tend to be more generic and, do, and be able to access any, anything and everything. Um, if they allow themselves to, whereas a medium tends to be specialised in some way, shape or form. This would be um, an aspect of source, if you wish, that is quite amused at the chance that the, the channel or the body uh, that I'm using now, uh, which is well known to me, uh, has experienced a little bit of um, being put on the spot, so to speak. And when departing was shaking its head thinking, ah, it's best to be out of the way in this instance because I'm not sure what source will do and source can be anything and everything rather than being specific. And so if I was to give you the dear observer of this particular modality of communication, some information relative to why you are here in this particular um, state of beingness, so to speak, then this may help you grow further. There is simply one rule when incarnate, and that is to just experience, learn and evolve as a result of everything that is decided upon being experienced before coming here. There, there are certain things that you would classify as life plans, which are not specifically, shall I say, direct Uh, attributable to that which you've created or your guide and those other entities that help the guide, the helpers have worked with. But they are specific goals that you need to work with and to experience. And so although certain channels or spirits, spiritual individuals may well say that there is a life plan for you and you will follow this life plan or that life plan, it is true that there's a life plan there, but it is moreover a series of goals to achieve, to allow you to experience, learn and evolve uh, in the way that you feel uh, is appropriate to where you are. So things here are not so clear cut because when the, the aspect of the part of you which I created that higher part, the much larger part, which remains disincarnate, incarnates into the human form and other forms that are within the physical universe that are used for incarnate purposes to allow you to experience the lower frequencies in the way they're supposed to be experienced in every way, shape and form, which isn't just experiencing the environment, it's also experiencing the interaction with other beings who are also experiencing the environment, but in a shall we say, sentiently divorced way of experiencing it. That being that you have lost the communicative ability to experience and communicate with the, other, the higher aspect of yourself which remain disincarnate or in the, in the frequencies associated with this evolutionary level and or myself. 
of course, as source. And so you are here to experience things in a very difficult way. Uh, although the difficult way can be also fun as well. And so experiencing, learning and evolving with the life plan being, a life plan being quite loose in so much as you have this thing to experience and that to into, thing to experience and this thing to experience, but it's up to you how you get there. And this is how the, uh, the aspect of free will is, is created through being given goals to experience and it's up to you how you get there. For instance, if you had to travel from one part of the world to the other part of the world, you could choose to walk it, you could choose to swim it, you could choose to fly it, you could choose to drive a car there, you could choose to use only trains, you could, use to, you could choose to use a push bike or a motorbike. All of these different modalities of transport are available to you to move from one part of the world to the other part of the world. You may even go straight line or you may visit various different places on, on route. And this is okay. Sometimes you get there faster, sometimes you get there slower. Some methods of traveling are slow, some are fast. Some directions take you out of the way, some take you directly. And so this is how it is with incarnation. The free will is taking whichever mode of transport you wish to go from A to B and taking whichever route you wish to go to A to B. Some of you go fast, some of you take your time and take in the scenery, so to speak. Neither are an issue, both are acceptable. And the evolutionary content associated with that is also uh, acceptable as well. One thing I will discuss with you before I leave this vehicle to be repopulated with its aspect is um, a very tricky subject, so to speak, of why I, as your creator, who is a caring and sharing a loving creator, who of which you are also part of, by the way, because as I created your higher selves through individualizing some of my sentience and the energy associated with that sentence and allow you to become individualized, would want you to experience that sort of hardships and difficulties and pain and suffering and things like murder and suicide and, and being but affected by terrorist attacks and wars whilst also experiencing love and friendship and joy and, exp and experiencing uh, being you know, in, in positions of power uh, also in, in smaller positions of, of experience and you know, being in situations of, of, of yin and yang of good and bad rather than just good. One of the biggest questions that I hear permeating through the ether, so to speak, is that why do I allow everything to be, these levels of suffering to be here? And that is that I allow it because you respect, you, you respect it and you, re, re, you desire it, so to speak. You know that if you are going to evolve in a balanced way, then you must experience every aspect of experiencing and incarnating and the experiences associated with incarnating. And so when you are experiencing hardship, you wish to experience hardship so that you could experience the opposite side of the joy when you aren't experiencing hardship and you're experiencing abundance. And so when you're experiencing pain, you want to experience pain so that you can experience no pain, or when you're experiencing physical um, limitations, you want to experience that so that you can appreciate when you experience no physical limitations. And so the soul, which is the smaller aspect of the, 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 the higher self, that larger part of which I created, wants to experience every aspect of something. And so it is prepared to experience certain things that are considered abhorrent, or certain diseases that are, fr that are considered to be unacceptable and uh, create fear and fright, because it's all part of the total perspective, the total experiential condition of being in lower frequencies. And it is only when one can experience 
every aspect of experience, of, of experience in terms of existence and all the myriad different ways in which it works that one can be a balanced and truly evolved being and move higher and higher up the frequencies associated with the evolution. And so think about this again, is that when you experience hardship, it is not that I, would, I want you to experience hardship or allow you to experience hardship, but I know that you want to experience hardship so that you may grow and evolve. And in doing so, so do I, because as you evolve, I evolve. As you experience, I experience. So all the, the good things that happen in the, the incarnate state are experienced by myself concurrently. And all the bad things that you experience, I experience as well concurrently. So it is allowable because it is desirable, not because it is abhorrent. So think of it in these terms. Try to understand that the holistic experiential condition is more appropriate than simply one-sidedness. Because one-sidedness does not create balance, does not create true growth. It creates abnormality. And so therefore, I leave you here with love in your hearts to let you know that when you are experiencing your worst possible experiences, this is when I love you the most. For I know that you are experiencing these things, and I along with you experience them of course, because you are wanting to become the more evolved being in as fast a way as possible, and in as completer a way as possible. For this, you are loved deeply and are thanked deeply. And so this final question of what would you know about the times you live in now? Hmm, this is something which is interesting because the times you live in now have already been and gone. They are already there in the future, they are already there in the past, they are already there in the present. They have already been experienced myriad times, <laughs> depending upon how you consider this and the different parallel conditions created by that function of origin called this channel called event space is, is something which is important to note that everything that can be experienced is experienced now everything that is experiencing we are experiencing is experiencing now everything that would be experienced is being experienced now but so it makes no sense to say what would you say about what we're experiencing now because it's, it's the start point, the middle point and the end point have already been experienced depending upon which particular space that you are focusing on right now so to speak. But in terms of where we are now there is, I will say to you this is not the greatest amount of change that this particular planet has experienced in its use by yourselves as a method of evolutionary acceleration. There have been greater changes in smaller times um, that are well ahead of the you would, what you would call prehistory, where things have happened very, very quickly. But there are things happening now that are also very quickly that are here as a, shall we say, a series of milestones that allow you all to recognize that there is something bigger going on. Uh, I will give you an example if it's difficult for you to understand, but if you look at your technology that you, or you, what you call technology, where you've gone from being, shall we say, in rudimentary science, scientific ways, 100, 200 years ago, to being fairly advanced, although the correlation to other previous incarnate civilizations that existed on this planet, <laughs> your level of advancement is still very poor. But nevertheless, it is reasonable from a technological perspective at this point in, in, in this particular um, civilization's progressive condition as an incarnate civilization. And so the changes that are happening are showing you that the higher up the frequencies you become, the faster information that is channeled through you is available to you. And so if you can see how fast technology has moved in the last 15 years compared to the previous 50 years, you will see that there has been a lot of progression, specifically 
in this area of artificial intelligence where you use computers to help you with your daily lives and the display technologies that are there and the computing power and the ability for you to understand and accept different form factors that are incarnate uh, forms that you use in the other parts of the universe and also the, the understanding that entities can be energetic as well not specifically of form and so there are lots of different shall we say learning points that are being given to you technology in terms of travel technology in terms of communication technology in terms of um, understanding more of the environment and technology in terms of understanding more about the structure of that which I am and which are, you are working with and so things are tr moving quickly uh, as a result of this and the, the, the speed in which certain things are happening are milestones to indicate that you are moving further and further and higher and higher up the frequencies as more higher frequential states are gained then people become more observant of things that were previously classified as being natural but are now classified as being abhorrent in terms of people um, committing terrorist attacks on each other or torturing each other or um, doing wrong things to each other in the past for instance in the medieval times if you want to call them that these things would be used as entertainment for instance the way certain individuals were executed or were trialed for crimes was unreasonable and was horrific but it was used for entertainment purposes whereas these days the mere thought of harming somebody is becoming abhorrent the also the ways of controlling mass masses of individuals through p political governments or through the use of large corporations or business businesses are starting to become more visible now because the higher frequencies mean that there can no longer be any hiding so to speak behind the scenes things are more visible because you are a higher frequency things move faster because you're a higher frequency when you're a higher frequency things move faster so you become an even higher frequency and so there's an upward spiral that allows you to move forwards and so things that are happening as well the minor skirmishes around the world if you want to call them that some people call them wars some people call them terrorist attacks but these are simply other ways of which higher frequencies can be achieved you would be <laughs> correct in thinking that most individuals would consider that terrorist attacks or wars are completely abhorrent and are not very spiritual but if you look at the positive side of what they create then you will see that they are spiritual for there are those souls who were together in knowing in the knowledge that they would be um, chastised quite severely so to speak if, if it was understood what they were doing that are working in the background to create these conditions where the bigger picture is being sought where the idea is to create a small nexus of abhorrent behavior that means that the rest of the po population is observant of this and in abhorrence of it and sends love to those who are involved in the the response or the result of this abhorrent behavior and also try to work together to make sure that this level of abhorrent behavior does not happen again and so the positive point is the bringing of people together to generate love and to correct uh, one particular process of wrong, think wrong thinking and wrong acting by broadcasting a desire to no longer think behave or act in this way and so we are moving in very fast ways and although there is still a long way away to go for this enlightened state or ascended state there are individuals who are ascending who are moving into the next frequential state who are moving out of your lives so to speak or just disappear they haven't disappeared they're just moving into a higher frequential state and although they can work with individuals of lower frequential states those of lower frequential states cannot work with them unless they come down temporarily to the lower frequential state because they are not not detectable 
or perceivable with the, the, the functionality of the physical senses. And so these times, although they appear to be fast from thought processes, behaviours, levels of acceptance, levels of visibility and, shall we say, increases in technology, are relatively speaking fast from your perspective, but it's not the fastest that things have moved on this planet by a long way. That doesn't mean you should relax. It just means that you should see things in a different perspective and realise that anything that promotes the opportunity for people to work in communion for a higher thought process or for something that is allowing us to be more in communion with each other not that just so I say the word communion and not communication is a route forwards towards increasing the frequency the base level frequency of those who are incarnate on earth and therefore increases the opportunity to experience learn and evolve in a more accelerated way. So these things that are classified as being bad have a, a positive function always and the positive function always outweighs the negative function as well. Hmm. Okay. So I hope that was a a reasonable description of why we're um, experiencing the vast levels of change we ha we're having now. Uh, change is change, you know. It's it's inevitable that we change, and it's inevitable that we when we rise through the frequencies, as a result of you know correct thinking, correct behaving, and correct acting that we will go up the frequencies and it can experience higher levels of functionality associated with this. And when we do that, we start to see the real meaning of who and what we are and what we're doing and what we, why we're here. And we start to operate in a better way, which brings up the frequencies again, gives us more functions and we start to become, therefore, more psychic, more intuitive and more capable individuals. And we start to work together in communion rather than as individualised individuals working only for the self. Where's mankind, where's, where, where's mankind going to, basically, yeah. Uh, the end game is basically that we get to a point where as aspects of our higher self, our true energetic self or, or higher self or Godhead, you know, the tool means the same thing, depend, you know, depending on which part of the world you come from, is able to incarnate in a lower frequency environment and interact with it in a completely neutral way. Not accruing karma, and karma is grossly misunderstood. Karma is all about the attractions and the addictions and the desires and needs to experience low frequencies, thoughts, behaviors, and actions and, sens and sensory reactions. And the, want to, the need to come back to experience that, you know, addictions. So the, the objective is to come into incarnation and be in the physical, but not of it. And so we interact with our environment, we interact with others in the full knowledge of why we're here and what we need to achieve. And we achieve it in as fast and as efficient and as robust a way as possible. And we move on. And when we do, when we get to that point where we're totally clear of who and what we are whilst we're in, in, incarnate, whilst we're in our incarnation, that we are still move, we continue to move, move up the frequencies, we get to a point where being incarnate doesn't give us any advantage anymore. We've mastered it. We're able to come here, interact, be part of the environment, get no addictions or desires or thoughts, behaviors and actions about needing to come back here again or doing things wrong or doing wrong, wrong to others. We just come here, interact perfectly, and go out again. So we experience what we want to experience, we experience it, and we go. At that point, when everybody's done that, all of those souls, those aspects of their higher selves, or energetic selves, or godheads, or over souls, 
have all done this, then there is no need for us to incarnate. Not only on the earth, but in any other planet with any other frequencies associated with the physical universe. At that point, no entity that's been created or no being that's evolved as a result of being as a result of the work the source is doing to ev to evolve and we're evolving on its behalf and our behalf as well by the way will need to go into lower frequencies ever again and then that also includes the next couple of frequencies above us which are um, this is like not just those frequencies associated with the gross physical universe but also those that are other un other universes that are close by it we won't need to go into those areas because we'll have done the gross physical thing. We've been able to come in, do it and get out without any skirmishes, without any attractions, without any debt, as it were, any karmic debt, any evolutionary debt. It's just clean experience and out. When that happens, there is no need to incarnate. And that's where we're going. That's where that's the that's the that's, that's the end point. That's the end game. That's the that's the, the end desire to get to a point where we no longer need to evolve because we've mastered it. Sorry. That's the end point. That's the that's what we desire to be able to get to the point where there's when we've evolved to the point where there's no longer any need to incarnate. The key to incarnation is to be not only an acceptance of your own condition, but be responsible for that condition and to work with it and to move on and to be of service to others, to help when required, when requested. Don't bestow yourself on people because that creates resistance, but moreover be there for them when they request it. And so there is also this requirement to be observant, to be aware of who and what you are and that others are the same that you're all smaller aspects of me experiencing the deepest recesses of those parts of my structure that are available to be experienced and you're evolving as a result and that there's a job to do here there's a job to experience learn and evolve this is a responsibility and so the responsibility is for you to do this in a most efficient way. And the most efficient way to do it is to be aware of who and what you are and to realize that every aspect is struggling on to experience, learn and evolve, deal with their responsibilities and their personal growth and their responsibilities to others in the, way, the best way that they can. And so when somebody or something is placed in front of you, and creates resistance. Maybe it's not that they're creating resistance, maybe it's their experience and your experience that you have to experience together and therefore you have to work together to remove that resistance or experience that experience together so that you can both move on in different directions. So the most important message that I can give you is to be aware not only of yourself and the requirements of yourself in this incarnation, but also the requirements of others in this incarnation. I would say that being aware of the requirements or demands of others whilst being incarnate is more of important than being aware of your own demands and requirements whilst being incarnate. For if you're looking after the demands and requirements or necessities to incarnate a robust and repeatable and efficient incarnation, then you don't need to look after yourself because others will be looking after you for you. And so you will all be all looking after each other. And as, as you look after each other, you will all ascend much faster because you will all understand yourselves, who you are, where you are, and what you are doing and how you're getting there and you will all understand 
what everybody else is doing to achieve the same thing. So be aware of self, but more importantly, be aware of others. And do everything you can to ensure that what others need to experience or do or be is important and that you should help them whenever they request it to experience what they need to experience and in doing so they will help you and in all working together resistance between each other will be removed and you'll move upwards through the frequencies as I highlight an acceleration than you are currently experiencing. Work individually and your progression will be slow. Work collectively and your progression will be accelerated. Hmm. We've got to work together. If we don't work together, we don't get anywhere, really. Hmm. It's amazing to think that all the, everything that's on these planets and other planets, and other frequencies as well, we create to create a stage set for us to work together in. You know, we create houses so we can work in communities. We create businesses so we can work together to help us work together in communities. You know, we create devices to allow us to travel between different areas of the planet so we can work together that way. Everything is geared towards us, work, us being given the opportunity to work together so that we can understand each other better, faster and remove the need to incarnate, to put ourselves into the stresses of experiencing low frequency existence in as fast a way as possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in essence, it's... A if you think of it, it's, it does, um, but the, the, the reason why they can do things in their own way is because they've been given this individuality. If you think of this, us knowing us, us with our human body, do we understand what each of our cells do individual, individually? We don't because we're a, we're a higher function of that. Our cells are a creation based upon our, our, our incarnate vehicle. But what each of our cells do individually, we, we can only guess at because we don't go into that level of depth. We're, we're involved at a higher level of functionality. Our cells are operating at a lower level of functionality. And that's the same for source, basically. If the source and above the source, the origin, could have efficiently experienced itself by itself, it would not have split off various smaller aspects of its sentience and the energy associated with that sentience to experience those smaller parts or those more, more, those deeper parts of itself on its behalf, whilst still being it. We are the cells of source. We work on our own to do what we need to do to experience that, 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 that environment that's there. One of the biggest questions that people may have trouble with is, well, hang about, if it's all about experiencing the structure of and the, freq and the frequencies associated with it, or dimensions or sub-dimensions or continuums or zones or whatever level of structure we're talking about, wh what's the point, you know, what, what's going on with all of these, you know, technologies and houses and everything else? What's, what's that all about? And the answer is that it's, you know, it's all to do with working in an environment. The, the way of working together or, 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 be, or being together is, is all about working together as a collective for a common function. That common function eventually being the, the, the removal of the need to incarnate through the ascension of all of us, the mass ascension of all of us by this upward spiral of you know, working together become a higher frequency, getting the higher frequency functions associated with, with that, therefore knowing each other better, therefore working together better, therefore moving up the frequencies, getting more higher frequency functions until the point is where, as I've just 
the source has just said basically through through me that we get to the point where we, we we've mastered the incarnation process and don't need to go any further so in in, in essence it's it's really about you know sort of being being here and working with the things that need to be in place to allow this level of interaction to work properly and so in this level of frequency we need to have shall I say infrastructure to allow this particular vehicle to work and so it needs to be need to be preserved so we've built houses we need to travel from one place to another at this frequency and so we've built transportation modalities whether it's group transport or whether it is um, yeah, individualised transport. We've created houses for us to sort of protect the body, you know, and there's communities surrounding all that as well. So everything that's been created has been to support the longevity of this particular vehicle that we're using to experience, learn and evolve in the, in the lowest frequencies. And so the idea of, you know, the difficult idea of why we've put, well, you say this is a play, but why, why is the play necessary? Well, this is all the supporting, this is all the supporting structure to allow the gross physical form to be able to continue its existence. Food to help it contain, to, help it, to still help it metabolize energy in the gross physical sense and still be animated by the, by the aspect or soul. Transportation to help us move and work with other souls. Houses to help protect the, 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 the body from the elements and, and, and create the longevity. And therefore, these things create, uh, are created close to each other because we like to work with each other. And so we create s small towns and cities and in countries. And so as we become more civilized, we become higher frequency. We start to become higher in technology, higher in interactivity, better at communicating to, with each other. There's less mistakes made in communication, so the chances of becoming um, in, in a negative interaction with each other through war, for instance, or fighting, becomes reduced. And so we get to this point where everything that we've created together is part of the complicated mechanism of experiencing low frequency existence. And so all the infrastructure that we've created around us is all part of something we've created to allow us to experience the absolute depth of the source on behalf of it. So it can evolve. Mm. Uh, we do create our reality. And if you can look around us now and look at the different realities that different people have created within the same environments that they were existing within, if you go into a city, for instance, people create a, a reality of um, being in abundance and therefore they're in abundance and they have uh, wealthy cars and wealthy houses and you know, good jobs and good careers. And also we create, some people create a, a different reality where they're, they're, they're not in abundance and so they're always in a state of anger at those that are, that are in abundance, so to speak, you know, the, the why have they got this versus why we haven't got this. And it's because they create the level of reality that they're in, where they're in need all the time or needing to be in benefit all of the time. And rather than working with it and thinking, well, hang about, we've created this or our parents have created it for us. Well, what can I do to move out of it? And a, a soul that is dedicated to experience the p potential to change environmental condition and status will and can make the jump from abject poverty to, to total wealth. And there are plenty of examples, rags to riches, examples where people have done this, where souls have really grabbed the bull by the horns and they've gone from being you know, totally poor environments in ghettos in America or low, or, uh, um, low wage earner locations within the UK and other areas, 
or even in very areas of, of, of absolute poverty in, in third world countries in the, in the rest of the, the, um, the earth and move themselves mentally and physically into a higher state of beingness and a higher state of awareness and a higher state of material comfort as a result of it. There is nothing wrong with being spiritual and materially rich as long as the spiritual individual realizes that being materially rich is only a transient condition and it's a, a nice to have and a nice to be able to help others with that material richness as well and the evolved individual high frequency individual will use their wealth to help others move themselves into a position of wealth as well not just materially wealth or or financially wealthy but also mentally wealthy as well in mental abundance spiritual abundance not just material or, or financial abundance little bits and pieces yeah um I was led down a certain direction then to be honest so it was it was um not sort of source coming through but more sort of you know information coming through to tell me telling me what to say so to speak uh, how do you differentiate that between channeling and whatever that is that you've just been directed to do it's it's <sighs> I've just been told to call it intu intuitive speaking where I have to remain me but the information has to be educational in some way or mean something you know and using the words that I wouldn't normally use that's why it's sometimes very um, slow because the words that are being given to me to use rather than me you know, using words that I would normally use. When, when this happens, my vocabulary is extended <laughs> dramatically, so to speak, with big words. Because <laughs> you know, I don't use big words very often. Um, but the big words do come out when I'm ch channeling the books, for instance, and when, when I'm doing that sort of thing where I'm being told what to say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, when we all work together and we, we recognise each other as being souls experiencing the earth and the low frequencies and are wanting to experience, learn, evolve, the depths of whatever we are in on behalf of ourselves and behalf of Source, and we can all work together to help us do that in a more comfortable way, then again, we come back to this thing about we've, we've mastered the incarnation and we no longer need to come back. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to talk to you. And thank you very much for allowing these um, <laughs> few faltering words to come forth. And I hope that they've, uh, they've been useful for people to, who, who listen to them.